Welcome back to part two of making an interactive grass shader. What we're going to do now is to get the grass to sway as though it has the wind blowing on it. So what we need to do is to first of all make a float over here in the blackboard area. I've already made one. Let me just delete that so I can go through it again with you. So with that open just plus on that we're going to get a float. We're going to call it sway amount and we're going to select it then come over to the graph inspector and click on the node setting and in here you want to go to the node mode and hit on slider and let's set this to say 0 0.1 which would be a slight sway okay so now this property will be available to the material in the inspector when you go to use it let's put together some code that's going to make the object sway. Now to move the vertices in a shader we need to modify the position values here in the vertex shader. Let's open this up a bit more and close down this graph inspector. I've also put that grass texture down in this um, main preview or the mesh I should say. You can get that by right clicking and going to custom mesh and then find in the mesh for that particular grass which is called bush low poly 2 and that will show you what it's going to look like okay so currently it's not swaying now each vertex here can be adjusted using this position up here which is its x y and z position of each individual vertex in this particular mesh okay so what we're going to do if we grab hold of a node called position and that position node we set it to the object because this position value here is in object space so if we were to feed this straight across into there we're sending the exact same values to the exact same values and in that case nothing's going to change as you can see down there so if we modify one of the values we'll actually get this to change we're going to get the grass to sway in say the x direction okay so back and forth across the screen so first of all we need to get that x value so we'll take this position and we'll bring it out and we'll split it so that we end up with our x y and z values now at some point the y and the z values are going to stay the same and get fed back through into position okay so what we could do with those is actually combine them already and put them back in so let's put a combine in here now we're going to combine the g value with the g value like that and then bring the z value which is the final b value in here through and feed that back into there with all of the x values set to zero now when we do that if we have a look at our mesh it'll actually have already done that and you can see how it's now flat because it's made the x direction values for the vertices zero so it's basically lining them up all on the value of zero with respect to the model itself okay so not the world okay so every single mesh will be flattened like this which is not what we want so let's just bring this over here and have a look at modifying that x value so we can get the x value to sway back and forward by using the time node the time node can then be used to generate values between negative 1 and 1 and then that value can be added to the x position so if we come down into here what I'm going to do is to bring the x value or the r value into an add and it can actually go down into the b value not that it matters it'll just be a little bit cleaner if we do it like this okay so we're going to add a time value let's bring this out here and put it as time node now we want values from time node that go between negative one and one cosine goes between negative one and one okay so over time basically we're adding values between negative one and one onto our x value you can see those values pulsating back and forward there which are then going to be combined down here with our other values okay so if we go over and have a look at our grass now 
have a look how it's actually working. So it is, well, it's not swaying, but we're actually moving it in the X direction. So with this done, if we save it and we just go back into Unity, press play, we'll be able to see all of our grass with that vertex displacement going on. Okay, so there you go. Now, it's not what we want. We just want it to sway towards the top, okay, and not at the bottom. So we kind of want to plant the bottom of the grass in the ground so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so let's go back into our shader and make a little change so that we get that working. Okay, so currently we have this cosine of time being added on to every X value of the vertices. We want none of it added to the vertices at the bottom, which means they have a zero value of Y. And then we want all of it added to the vertices at the top where they have a Y value of one. So we need to modify this here. And we're gonna use the UV values in the Y direction because they range from zero to one. So if we right click, create node and go UV geometry, Let's just make some room up here. We're going to bring this out and split it because we only want the Y direction, which is this green value here, which is gonna range from zero at the bottom to one at the top. So let's bring that out and we will multiply it by our cosine time and then feed that into here instead. Okay, so notice how we're getting the blacks always black down the bottom. So this is like zero being added to the bottom vertices. And these are the values over time that get added progressively up the top. And now you can see that grass over here is actually swaying. So let's just save this and we'll go back into our scene and have a bit of a look at what we're getting now when we press play to see what our grass is doing. Okay, so in here, it looks a lot nicer. Okay, so it's actually swaying back and forward. Okay, now we haven't yet built in the sway amount. So let's go back into our shader and put that sway amount in. Now it's going to factor in into this part here that we've just created and put together because it's the one that's working with our time value. So what I might do is grab this time value and before it gets fed into here, actually then multiply it by our sway amount. So let's take that out of there and put sway amount into here. We're going to then get our cosine time, multiply that by the sway amount and then feed that up into there. Now, what you have to keep in mind is that sway amounts only going between zero and one. So you could actually make it more if you really want to ramp that up, but let's have a look. Let's save it and we'll go back into our scene where we can run. And once we have our grass there, okay, so you can see it's swaying just a little tiny bit. Let's come down to the scene. We can get a little bit closer to this grass. Here it is. And if we now select the material for the grass in the project, we can come over to the inspector and have a look at the sway amount, which is here at 0 0.1. So if you increase this up to say one, you're gonna be back with your full sway amount, which I think is probably enough. If you wanted to get extreme you could change the value of the slider here so that you could actually lift this up above one but you probably don't really need to so now you can have like a light wind like that or you can have quite a strong wind now currently all of these blades of grass are moving in perfect unison with each other which doesn't sort of naturally work so we're going to add a little bit of chaos into here as well. All right, so where we need to add the chaos is before we get around to feeding our value, which is generated by this, like the addition value, 
into this multiply with our UV because this is the one that's actually going to cut it off based on the height. So I'm just going to grab these things and bring them out here because we're now going to use some noise with these and add them to our multiply up here. Okay, so in here we're going to create a node called gradient and we're looking for the gradient noise. So here's our gradient noise and the gradient noise is going to create a noise pattern with values of 0 and 1 in it. We want to then grab that and bring it out and we're going to add that to this multiply up here. So our time value is going to get this added onto it and then that's going to be the value that gets fed back up into this multiply node here instead of directly from the UVs. Okay, so if we come over and have a look at this preview, let me just make this a bit bigger so that you can see it and get a bit closer into this part of the shader. We have a look at this, okay. Now it's not very obvious that we've got any chaos being added at this point, but if we can look from the top like that, you're watching the X values which are going, going back and forth along here. If you change the scale of this, see how it waves more? Okay, so if we change it to like 7.62, you can see now how it's sort of bent and changing over. So essentially we kind of want this to change with time so that we can get that ripple effect through those X values. The way to do that is to use a tiling and offset value for your UVs. So let's bring this over and go tiling and offset. Now the UV values, they're just the default values. The offset values for this, we want to use our time. So we can bring our time node over and actually plug it in to the offset. And now we're going to end up with extremely erratic <laughs> rippling grass, which we can, of course, turn this value up or down, depending on how chaotic you want it to be. You can actually make this, actually if I make it about zero, it's going to be white. So just very, very small amounts here will give you little tiny ripples in that, which just makes it slightly more interesting. Okay, so now that that's like that, let's just save it and have a look back in our scene to see what it looks like when it's on mass. So we'll press play. Okay, let's have a look at that grass now. Okay, so it has much nicer wobble through it, but again, it's all still in sync. So when we come back now in the next lecture, we'll actually look at putting a little bit more chaos in here between the different models across the whole paddock so that they aren't sort of moving perfectly together. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.